Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to set up Cocos 2DX version 4 on Mac for Android development. So let's just get straight down to it. So there's a couple of things we need to download. First of all is Cocos. Go to Cocos.com. I will provide a link to everything that you need. And do, 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 do. Then you want to go to when it loads up products, Cocos 2DX, just click download and it's done on the latest version which is 4.0 but just if it's a newer one like 4.1 4.2 whatever download that so click that and this will start downloading there we go okay i'm going to cancel it because i've already got it downloaded but you don't want to do that next one we need to download is android studio if you've already got android studio set up and you've got you know you know emulator set up on it great fantastic then you can skip this step if not just go here and click download android studio and the download and should start any moment now again i'm going to cancel it because i've already got it downloaded those are the two things that you need to download and what you need to do is first of all just open up that android studio file that you downloaded drag and drop this into an application like so i'm not going to do it because i've already done it but you just drag it like that you'll start copying over and once that's all copied over then you can actually go to applications android studio just double click this and go through the setup process just do the basic setup and shortly i'll show you the extra things that you need to install but just get it set up get it launched up and then you can close it down next i'll minimize this next what we need to do is actually set cocos 2dx up so i've put cocos 2dx in a folder in application called development this is where i like to have all my development frameworks that aren't just you know a installation file that automatically installs it some that i have to manually configure i set it up usually in here you want to double click this zip file and it will start extracting it shouldn't take long at all so this is just extracting the zip file. Then you want to rename this to Cocos2D-X. Reason I'm doing that this is completely optional. But the main reason is if you upgrade your Cocos2DX version later on, this folder is what the setup will refer to. It just prevents extra setup. So now we need to run this setup.py file. To do that, open up terminal. You can also do it from here. So if you can literally search for terminal and do that or go to the you know application folder and go to utilities terminal right there so those are the ways that you can open it up so go to development and we need to cd space drag this on click enter run the setup.py file by doing dot forward slash setup dot py click enter and this will go through the cocos console stuff that's fine it's asking for ndk root which we do need but we're going to set that up in android studio so we can actually completely skip this it's asking for the android sdk root again we're going to set this up in android studio so we can completely skip this and we just need to copy this line here so copy that line paste it here click enter it is instant so that is very fast now what we need to do is if we type in cocos if we get something along those lines and not an error that means cocos is successfully set up if it isn't tell me the error and i'll help you just you know pop a message in the description or on my discord channel which is in the description now if you're going to pop a message it could be like in the comments you know the my discord channels in the description plus my website and email etc okay so we can close this down now you still need that there for creating projects so you want to leave that alone and what we need to do is now create a project i'm going to cd to the desktop and i'll just like to do that by dragging a file from the desktop onto it and then just doing that okay so to create a project you go cocos space new and the name of your project so i'm going to put cocos test space dash l space cpp for c plus plus js for javascript and lua for lua i'll put cpp 
this is all you need in you know in minimum but you can also provide an optional package name by putting dash p sonos.com del sonar system whatever your domain is called dot cocos test for example click enter it will start creating the project literally takes like 10 second max and we're done and uh, we can actually close this down now and in here we need to open up proj.android so we need to open up android studio and remember you can just go to applications double click it again you will probably have you know go through some setup process just to set it up go through the basic settings and i'll show you now what else you need to download go to configure go to sdk manager and in android sdk make sure you got one of these sdk platforms selected i recommend the latest non-preview version if you specifically need an older version or a preview version feel free to download that as well so to download one you just click the tick click apply and it'll go through the process and just accept any terms and conditions next go to sdk tools these are the things that you need installed is android sdk build tools lldb ndk cmake android emulator and android sdk platform tools some of these will already be installed by default anything that isn't just again you know if i do this this should be very simple like select it click apply well that's actually quite a big download so that, but you would literally just click ok and then you'll start downloading so that, that's basically all you would do and next what we need to do is go to avd manager and set up a virtual device and to do that create new virtual device or you will probably for you you'll look something along the lines of like that so click create new there we go and select any device you want so i'm going to select pixel 3 you know 3a that is fine and click next and from here it will want a system image if none are downloaded go to recommend select the latest you know non you know r which is release version and then you just literally click download click accept click next you will go through the download process and then you can select the image so as you can see i can't select this one because it's not downloaded but make sure you go on downloaded click next and then you can name it you can select the default orientation you can change some advanced settings like internal storage feel free to you know tweak all that stuff if you want to so just click finish and we got this device right here and i'm gonna just launch it up i would like to just then afterwards it'll just sort of be in a sleep state and it'll launch up a lot quicker so let's just wait for this to successfully launch up so this the first time you launch up a new virtual device it can take a bit of time so just wait patiently for this to complete and this is pretty dependent on how fast your computer is a fast computer will run it let's say a little bit slower i mean a little bit faster slow computer can take a bit of time so just wait patiently again this is just a waiting game and obviously because i'm recording it is gonna be slower than usual so you're maybe super duper fast okay so pixel is starting or whatever device you know you selected as your virtual device it's great that you can create multiple devices so you can you know test it how it sort of feels and looks without buying physical devices and now this has basically all launched up i'm gonna close it down that's fine click x on that and now we want to import the project so now we've actually done the vast majority of the setup and for you know just android studio there's some projects set up left so go to where we created your project go to proj.android click open 
and this will launch up and what you want to do you can close any tips down wait for all of this indexing and whatnot to complete once that's complete we can move to the next stage so go wait for the greater stuff to complete wait for all that stuff to complete and do if you get this error ndk not configured i always get this when you project go to file project structure and click the drop down because we've installed ndk it does appear but for some reason it doesn't automatically select it so let's select it like so click apply okay and okay we now gain a different error but that's because we just need to update the grader plugin you'll get this little pop-up here click update that's fine click update and it'll go through the process of upgrading Gradle. For you, it might take a little longer because it's actually going to first download the newer version because I've already done this before on another project. It's not down re-downloading the newer Gradle. Therefore, it's just, you know, building it. And, you know, that's just something I wanted to mention just so you know that it will download something first. Okay, so we are almost done now. Almost and we can't run it yet because it says device supports but apk only supports this arm um, version to fix that go to gradle scripts and i want to show you one thing before that actually go to gradle dash wrapper properties if that gradle plugin update thing didn't appear you can change this from the default version i think which is 5.1.1 to 5.6.4 and then a sync now button will appear here click sync now and it will sync next go to gradle.properties select that copy and paste it there so the prop underscore app underscore abi is now looking like that now it supports all the applicable architectures click sync now and you will see this change from device, you know, APK not supported it to to that. And now we can actually run it. So click run. It's actually gonna launch up the device. That's the reason I recommend launching it up once before because it's just a lot quicker. And it hasn't launched the actual game yet because it is going to go through the process of building all of the files. So there are 647 files. There can be more if you add more as well. Luckily, once it's successfully compiled, once any changes we make, only those will be re, you know, compiled, rebuilt. So it's only a one-time process unless you do a re, you know, build of the entire project, which really isn't required. You know, at least not that often maybe if you're having some problems then you could do a rebuild but yeah just wait for these processes to occur once they finish this will usually you know jump up to a higher number completed so again this can just take a bit of time so it's got to wait patiently Okay, so it's jumped up to 230 something, 250, still going. gone past the 400 mark now like I said it's literally just the first one time only 
and after that you'll just build the files that you change and still just going through the process still going still going it's almost hit 500 now yep it's hit 500 the next little mark will wait for you 550 i just find this mentally helps it go easier if i you know find small little points uh, it's at 550 now 600 always oh, going fast now yeah <laughs> now you'll get to 647 really quick <laughs> now now the last couple it wants to take its time <laughs> okay Six four six. Six four seven. So they were red, but they were just notes. They were in errors. Build successful, and that means you should launch it any moment now. So it is still. It's basically installing the APK onto the device that is all automatic. Then you'll launch it up. Install successfully finished and there we go and there we go so we can rotate the device so we can see it in its landscape form and that's it that's all we had to do we can shut it down like so and don't know what's happened there uh, to prove that if I was to change a file and yeah so this is where your project files will be cpp my game and they'll be in classes right here so you can go to hello world scene.cpp and if i change this to hello world xyz instead of just hello world click run this will be a lot quicker there'll probably only be two or three files that you'll actually want to build after this part as you can see saying it's up to date just a couple of files, the hello world scene object file. And it's installing it. So you know it took 14 seconds this time instead of like three or four minutes. And there we go. It's got the new version. So that is how you let me shut this down now. shutting down and I'll shut Android Studio down as well there we go still shutting down <laughs> I'll deal with that after so that is how you set up Cocos 2DX version 4 on Mac for Android if you want to create a new project you literally just run this command where you want the project to be created and then just go through the rest of the steps in Android studio you know with the ndk stuff and you know in a five you know finding the location the grade or update and all of that stuff so that's it if you have any questions feel free to pop me a message and as usual i look forward to seeing you in the next video